Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Trader Jeff Moore, author of the book, Trading Part-Time. In this video lesson, we're going to talk about selling options, okay? Selling options and some of the strategies to use around selling options. I did a class a while back for some of my students in my uh, Trading Part-Time University, and it went so well that I pieced it up, and I'm giving it to you for free. So, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell to be notified whenever I shoot a brand new video. All right, I hope you enjoy this uh, free video on introduction to selling options. And again, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. We'll see you inside the lesson. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Trader Jeff Moore, author of the book, Trading Part-Time. And I just wanted to say uh, welcome to this free training on selling options. I did a class a while back. And we talked about selling options on various strategies, and it was a huge, huge success. It was so big that I want to give it to you for free. Now, whether you know anything about options or not, that's immaterial, okay? This could be your introduction to options. So pay attention to this free training, and if there's something that you would like to learn more about, then we can dive it in deeper, okay? Because again, I'm going to talk about some strategies you may or may not be familiar with, but sit back and just grasp the concepts. See if it's something that's interesting to you, okay? All right, everybody, so uh, again, enjoy this free training, and we'll see you at the end. I want to make you, again, at the end, I'm going to give you an opportunity, a special offer, so we'll see you at the end. All right, everybody, enjoy this free training. So let's talk about some selling options again, okay? Selling options. We can buy options or we can sell options. Now, one of the big things about selling an option is time decay, right? When we buy an option, let me go over here. When we buy an option, call or a put, we buy an option, time decay hurts us, okay? Time decay hurts us. And that's why buying options is so hard because the time bleeds away. For example, we got a field right here. For example, okay, now I want to set my stop loss underneath this 10 moving average, okay? So what happens here is if we buy an option, okay, let's go to, well, I think we got filled in an option the other day, Lululemon. Did we get filled in Lulu? Yeah. Look, guys, we're at $319. We bought a call option in Lululemon. Okay, I think, Dan, I think you pointed that one out. Okay, right here. Oh, this is my paper money, but I think we bought that option. I'm not really sure where we bought it because this is the paper money, but I think it was somewhere around here. I don't know, but we're up. But the bottom line is this. When you buy an option, time decay hurts you. So if, for example, we're in Lululemon. I think we did it as a trend trade, though, 157 days, so that's not really going to be a a good example. Let's see here. Enter the options. No. No. Okay. Well, here, we'll just go here. Let's go to JP Morgan, for example. JP Morgan. Now, let's say we buy this with 45 days. Every day, that time value, think of time value as an ice cube, and it melts, right? Ice cubes melt a little bit by a little bit. So, time decay is, as time decay melts it's melting your option like it's melting your option away so for example let me go here delta theta gamma theta is your time decay and you see here three which means every day you see it's minus you're losing three dollars off your option so if i bought this option for 425 every single day i'm losing three dollars off this option no matter what so if the stock stays flat can somebody tell me, if I buy an option and the stock stays flat, let's say I buy it at $50, and over the next two weeks, it stays $50. Will my option price stay the same, go up, or go down? I buy an option, 50, two weeks, it stays at 50. Will my option price that I bought at 425 go up or down, or not move at all? It'll go down, and it'll go down because of time decay. Okay, and you can see that right here. So let's just do this option, 287. Let's go up here, 
and let's change it to Theo. So let's reset this, and let's just say two weeks go by, and the option, the stock doesn't move. It just two weeks go by. So you bought it at 280. Look at this, guys. Two weeks. Two weeks. We didn't change. So the stock stayed the same. You bought it at 287. Look what the option is, 223. You lost 64 in time decay. That's almost 25% you lost in time decay. That's why when you buy an option, you need the stock to move. That's why when we buy options, we're looking for setups that give us higher probabilities. So if I'm going to buy a call option, buy a call option, and I'm not talking about a trend trade, because a trend trade, we go around 100 days. So we have some time. But when I do a short-term option trade and I buy an option, okay, what setup, if the stock is bullish, what setup do you think I'm looking for? Okay. What setup? So if I buy an option and time decay hurts us, I need it to move, and the market's going up, what setup do you think I'm focusing on? Guillermo, look at what Guillermo type. BF. For those of you that are new, that stands for bull flag. Bull flag. Okay? Because... A bull flag is a high probability strategy in an uptrend, okay? That's what I'm looking for. When I buy an option to the upside, I'm looking for a bull flag because I need it to move. If it's the downside, I do a bear flag, just the opposite. And I'm doing a bear flag because I need it to move. Is everybody cool on that? I need it to go to the downside fast. Now, when we sell an option, oops, when we sell an option, it's a different game. Time decay helps us, which means it's the passage of time. So, if I go back over here, and I look at this same one. Let's go back here to the uh, right here. So if I buy this option, it's 286, right? But if I sell this option, so I go here to the sell. Now, again, I don't want to to do it, but let's do this. Let's go up here to this column with Lululemon. I'm going to add this delta, so you can see. Let's add the theta. Theta. Okay, and let's go up here. So if you notice here, we bought this option. Theta is minus 472, which means we're losing $4.72 off of our option price. Okay, and if you go back over here and you go to trade price and you add the trade price, that's what you bought it for. So I bought this option for... 25.20. I'm losing 4.70 every day. Okay. I must have got stopped out. Yep. Right now, what that's a sign to tell you is no more trading during this time period. The market's undecided right now. Okay. So we entered. Just kind of want you to know. We entered here. I set a stop underneath here. So right now, the market's too volatile. It's not trending. You see how this is flattening out? That means I'm done trading. Done. No matter what, I'm done. Until the afternoon. Okay? That's what that means. I hit my target already. This was an opportunity to see if it's going to trend, and it might still trend. It might still trend. Now, I had set my stop loss underneath this 10 moving average, or 8 moving average, with a different strategy, but it's flattening out. And I've seen this play out too many times. That means I'm done for this. I hit my target. I lost the second one, so I'm still up. 
So now I'm just going to wait it out and see what happens at the end of the day. So I'm done day trading this for today because, again, it only works when it's momentum. And if you notice now, there is no momentum. Okay? Just wanted to point that out. Now back to this. Okay. So right here, we are losing it. So let's say that I, I'm just going to sell this option right now for illustrative purposes only. We're going to sell this option. Okay, JP Morgan, and we just got filled. So what I want to do now is I want to go down here to JP Morgan, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to move it to my, let's just move it to our basic options. Okay, and again, this is for illustrative purposes only. So right here, right here. Now look at the difference, guys. I sold this option. Look at the theta. I'm gaining $3.26. So you are getting money because now you're obligated to buy the stock at 101. And for you obligating yourself to buy that stock, the number one is you're going to get a credit. So in this case, when I buy an option, it costs me money. When you sell an option, so when you buy an option, it costs you money. When you sell an option, you get a credit. So you get money. Okay, you get money because you're obligating yourself. That what you're saying is you have the obligation. If J.P. Morgan, in this particular case, I sold a call. Why did I sell a call? Oh, I did it the other way around. Dang. I meant to sell a put. But either way, I'll show you here. I sold a call. So since I sold a call, what, I, what I'm saying is that if J.P. Morgan closes above 101, so what I did was I sold a call. I sold the 101. Again, I just did it for illustrative. I would have looked for a call up here. But I sold the call at 101. Okay, I sold it. So what I'm saying in this particular case is, since I sold, let me do my little calculations, 101. I'm obligating myself to buy the stock at 101. Okay, 101. So if the stock goes up, and let's say it goes to 107, okay, 107, would you rather sell the stock at 107? Would you, okay, so here we go. Would you, if you bought the stock at 101 and you sold it for 107, how much is your profit per share? Six dollars. That's pretty good, right? If you bought the stock at 101 and the stock went down to 92 and you sold it, do you make a profit or do you lose a profit? Well, not a profit, but do you make money or lose money? If you buy it at 101 and you sell it at 92, you lose. You lose nine dollars. So here's my question to you. Would you rather lose $9 or make $6? Of course you'd rather make $6. So here's the thing. If I'm selling this call, if you buy a call, you want the stock to go up. If you sell a call, you want the stock to go down. Here's the reason why. If I sell the 101 and the stock goes down to 92, who is going to want to own the stock at 101 when it's now 92? Nobody. Nobody. So what happens in that case is that's when you would, it would just, they call it expire worthless. That's your goal, is you want to either buy it back for cheap, or expire worthless. Let me keep repeating this. Let me make sure you guys get this. Okay? So, if we sold this, I can't remember what we got it. Ah, dang it. And I can't go back to the screen, but oh, man, let me do this. What do we what do we get filled for? Good. 
Again, it might go up, but again, I just I don't like this. I don't like this crab, even though this is a ring low entry. We'll test it out, and we'll put. Again, it's a ring. It's still below, so no, it's not a ring low entry. Hmm. Interesting. My thoughts are that it's just going to kind of do this sideways action, but we'll see. Because we got stopped out a minute ago, right? Here. And again, it was a small it was a small stop. I just put it underneath this eight moving average. I'm expecting it to just do nothing. But anyway, back to what I was saying. We got okay, two seventy five. So here we go. If we got two dollars and seventy five cents for this option. We were given the credit, okay, so that we got a credit of 275. So here's our goal when we sell an option. Goal number one is we're going to buy it back for less than we got the credit. For example, if this stock goes down, this option will start to decrease in price, okay? So let me ask you this. If I buy this option at $2.75, I buy the call, and the stock goes up, what's going to happen to the price? Remember, if I buy a call and the stock goes up, what's going to happen to this option price? Is it going to go up or down? If I buy a call, so the stock moves in my favor, it's going to increase. So let's say it increases to 375. So what do you think happens to this option if the stock goes down? So if I buy it at 275, I buy it, but the the stock goes down, this option is going to lose value because I'm losing money, right? So if I sell the call, again, think of it like this. I got 275. If this stock goes up, this is going to increase. If the stock goes down, the option is going to decrease. So here's my question to you. If I am given $2.75 as a credit, and I'm going to buy it back, and I buy it back at $3.75, do I make money or do I lose money? Let me repeat. If I get it for $2.75, a credit, but I have to buy it back for more expensive I'm going to lose one dollar because I sold it. I have to buy it back. I was only given two seventy five so if I am given two dollars and seventy five cents and the stock goes down, this option goes down. I buy it back for one seventy five I buy it that means I make a dollar a hundred bucks. so when I'm selling a call. I'm selling this 101, I want the stock to go down. Because if I'm given 275, one of my options is to buy it back for cheaper. So when you sell a call, you, okay, so two options. One, you want to buy that option back for cheaper. Two, expire worthless. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So if I'm given $2.75, 2 dollars and I sold the 101 call, and the market goes down, who is going to want to own it at 101 when it's now 92. Nobody. So then what happens is this will bleed to zero and it expires worthless. And I collect the full premium and I keep the full premium. The only danger in letting it expire worthless is what if I sold the 101 and the stock is at $98 and there's only one more day to expiration. But the stock on that day gaps up. 
and it closes at 10101. One cent above the strike that I sold. What do you think is going to happen to me? If I sell a 101, if you don't know, put a question mark. And the stock has one day left to expiration. On that day, it gaps up and closes at 10101, one cent above the strike that I sold. I'm exercised, which means I now have to buy 100 shares of J.P. Morgan at 101. I have no choice. So if I have to buy 100 shares at 101, I'm going to need to pay 10,100 dollars. Because remember, when you whatever you if you buy an option or sell an option, whatever the strike, in this case since you're selling it, you're obligated to own this stock. Yes, at 101. So we've got to be very careful. Because if you're going to let it expire worthless, the last day could hurt you. Okay, now I have rules that say when you can let it expire. But again, just be prepared. But the main thing I want to get out of this discussion so far is when you buy an option, time decay hurts you. It costs you money. When you sell an option, time decay helps you. You get a credit. Okay, and then in the options... We want to buy that back for cheaper or let it expire worthless. Any questions on that first part of the discussion? Any questions on that? Now's the time to ask your questions. This is the basics of selling options. You buy, we haven't got to the rules yet. Each strategy has different rules, Guillermo. Each strategy has different rules. I just want to make sure you understand. So, here's the deal. If I, let's say this. Let's put on my study set three green arrows. Okay? Three green arrows. Y'all like this study set? So, Here's the thing. When I do a three green arrow entry, okay, like the moving average is going down, but let's say this moving average hooks up. And we have one green arrow, two green arrow, three green arrow. What is, and then I set my stop loss 3% below the moving average. So when I do a three green arrow entry, Tell me, do I, yeah, this is very basic, but we're just kind of making this point. If I do a three green arrow entry, I'm assuming that the stock is going to go up or down. That's a very stupid question, but again, just we're just making sure we get this. Course, up. So what I'm expecting to happen is this moving average to go like this, and the stock to just continue to work its way up, right? So, if I see a three green arrow entry, and, now I'm going to do this, because you're going to want to, oh my God, I didn't write it here. Unfortunately, I don't know how to keep this on the screen, where it's going to erase in a minute, but, you have a couple choices. Number one is you can buy the stock. Right? That's a bullish strategy. Buy the stock. Another bullish strategy is you can buy, you know what, let's do this. Buy, let's write this down. I want you all to have this for your records. Get them on, maybe you can work out a cheat sheet. Okay, so three green arrows. Strategies to trade. One, buy the stock, right? Buy the stock. Second, buy the 
option, and I'm going to put option long call trend trade. Third, third, you can sell a put. So let me write that down. Sell a put. Okay. Sell a put. Now, let's make sure we get this. This is again, write these down. These are strategies to trade. Oops, I'm gonna put strategies to trade bullishly. Buy the stock. Buy the option or sell the put. Sell a put. So when I buy a put, for example, when I buy a put, this is basic. Do I want the stock to go up or down? When I buy a put, up or down? When I buy a put, no, down. When you buy a call, you want the stock to go up. We have a long call trend trade, three green arrows that we did the trading plan. When we buy the long call, hence the word long call, you want it to go up. So when you buy a put, you want the stock to go down. Make sure you understand that. So if I buy the 97 put, I need the stock to go down and by expiration be below. That's how I make money. Okay, when you buy a call, you want it to go above. Okay, so if I buy a put, and let's say that put costs me right here. Let's go to the put side. Here's the put side. We're on Citigroup. The put. You buy on the ask, you sell on the bid. So let's say this first strike out of the money. It's 220. If I buy the put, it's going to cost me. This is a debit of 220. See? Click. Maximum loss 220. What you pay for the option. Okay? Now, it says maximum profit, but there's, I guess it's because I have other positions, but there's no maximum profit. But it costs you money when you buy, okay? So what happens is if I buy that put at 220, and it's the 60, right here, look at here, the 60.5 put, and the stock goes down, to let's say fifty dollars that means it went down ten dollars this option is going to go up in value because it went down and so the option is going to increase so if the stock goes up okay and let's say it closes at seventy dollars the option is going to go down because I bought a put and if it goes down, it's going to increase. If it goes up, it's going to decrease. So here is my thing. If I sell the put, sell it, and I sell the 60.5 strike and the stock goes up to $70, $70. Would you rather own the stock and be able to sell it at $70 or own the stock and be able to sell it for only $60? Of course, you'd rather be able to sell it for $70. So why would you want the stock at $60.05 when it's now at $70? Okay. So here's my thing. When I sell the put, the stock goes up. If I get a credit of 220 and I buy it back for $1, that means I make a dollar 20. So what you guys need to know, you can go back and watch it and we're going to continue to talk about this for a lot because this is a, you know, more complicated 
I guess you know selling option a little bit different. But the bottom line is you get a credit. You want to either buy it back for cheaper or expire worthless. So when I sell a put, I want the stock to go up. That's what that's all you need to know. When you sell a put, you want the stock to go up. Because you will be able to buy it back for cheaper or it will expire worthless. So back to my examples. If I'm looking at a three green arrow setup, and again, this is not a three green arrow setup because the moving average is down. But if it hooks up, okay, if it hooks up, I'm expecting the stock to go up. So if I sell a put, Let's say I sell I sell this 97 put. Okay, I sell the 97 put. Then what I'm saying is as long as this stock stays above 97 by expiration, I'm going to get maximum gain. For example, if I go here to JP Morgan and I go to 45 days and I look at the put. Did we just sell this put a minute ago? Which one did we sell? I don't even remember. Oh, we already sold this one. Oh, we sold a call. We'll sell a put now. Again, this is all for illustrative purposes. So I go over here to the put. And I look for a 30, closest to a 35 delta. Okay? But preferably lower than 35. So I'm going to do this 33. Okay? So if I go over here and I click that and I sell the 97 put here, I am going to get a credit of 160. That's $160. I hit confirm. I'm selling this put, so I'm getting a credit of $160. They're going to put $160 into my account right away. I just paid $160. Because when you buy, you pay. When you sell, they give. Okay? Now, here's the danger. Look at your maximum loss. $9,540. That's assuming that the stock goes to zero. Because when I'm selling a put, understand this. You have unlimited risk until the stock goes down to zero. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. As long as this, and if, if it's a three green arrow entry, aren't you expecting it to start trending up? So if you sell the put below the moving average, you're expecting it to go up anyway, right? Because that's why it's a three green arrow entry. It's a three green arrow entry. So if it goes up, your 97 put is going to just decrease in cost or expire worthless. So my thing is if you buy the stock, it's going to cost you $10,000. If you buy 100 shares, you can sell the put and they're going to give you money. hundred some dollars. And as long as the stock stays above the strike you sold, you're going to hit maximum gain. So this stock can even go down, down, back up. As long as it stays above $97 by expiration, you're going to get maximum gain. So here is another thing I want to suggest to you guys. If I see a three, let's say I see a three green arrow entry. Let's go to one that I think had a three green arrow entry. Facebook. Here we go. And guys, I'm in Facebook and I'm crushing it. I got in a three green arrow entry. Right here. Let's say I saw Facebook and it was one green arrow, two green arrow, three green arrow, uptrending. At the time, this moving average was $138. So let's say that... I wanted to sell the 137 put. Why the 137? Because it's below my moving average. Okay, the 137 put. 
it's below the link, instead of buying it. So I could go over here to Facebook, Facebook, and I like to look at 45, around four, around 45 days to expiration. Really, it's 30 to 50, but I like this. So I'm going to look up here first, good volume. I'm going to look for a 35 delta. And again, we're going to write rules to this. I'm just introducing you guys. But anyway, volume, 35 delta. These are good strikes. 480. So, well, that's not the strike. So let's look here. So the 35 delta is 143. Which one did I want to sell? 137. It's too high. Again, I've waited too long. The reality is I don't want to sell the 143. It's too high. I need to sell the 137. And the 137 is here. So if I sold the 137, and the delta is 24. So just so guys know, if the delta is 24, that means you have a, you can go here to your column. Let me see here. And again, I'm just introducing you guys, so don't freak out. 71%. See this? Probability out of the money. If I sell this option, I have a 71% probability of in the next 45 days it closing above that. 71% probability. Okay? 71% probability. So if I go here and I sell, I'm going to get $300. For selling that put. And as long as the stock stays above 137 by expiration, and again, that is the, again, this is below the moving average. The Again, you guys want to do this right when you're getting your three green arrow entries. This is really high now because you want to get about a 35 delta. Okay? But the 137, as long as it does that, I'm going to keep $300 per contract. So if I did three, I'm going to get $900. But here's the thing. I don't, want, I don't want you guys to go on like a crazy selling spree because look at your maximum loss. $40,000 because I sold three. Because remember, you, you're obligated to buy 100 shares at 137. You're obligated to buy... 100 shares at 137. So if I buy 100 shares at 137, that is $13,000. So if I sell one contract, just one, and I get called out, I have to come up with 13 grand. So if I sell three, 41,000. That's why my maximum loss is if I had to buy the shares, 300 shares, okay? Now, this is a very expensive. I'm not expecting you guys to go out there and sell, but here's another thing I'm going to tell you, because you're probably all like, there's no damn way that I would do this. What if you do this? Again, this is introducing you guys. What if I do this, okay? If I want to buy 100 shares of Facebook at $149, it's going to cost me $14,900, right? That's what I'm going to have to put up for 100 shares. So what if I do this, 137? Right-click, sell custom with stop. Okay, let me show you what I did. This is the th I know this is the delta. See, delta... 71% probability. This is 71% probability. 25 delta. I sold. Right click. Sell custom with stop. Okay? With stop. So, what if I do this? I'm changing these goods to a cancel. I'm making the buyback a market order. So, what if I say to myself, hmm. I'm selling the 137 put. If the stock closes below this 137 strike, there's a high probability that it's going to start a downtrend. Right? 
Because again, if it reverses the trend, there's a high probability. Now, there's lots of times throughout the day that the stock will go low, but then fight back throughout the day. So what if you do this? I don't even know what's filling on. I got stuff filling everywhere. So what if you do this? So that was one of my day trades. You go here. I'm selling the 137 put. And again, right now it's 299. I can you can probably put it up here in the middle and say, look, as the ask is 10, the bid is 298. So I'm going to split in the middle and I'm going to try to get 305. Well, now it's changing. So let's just leave it at that. But what if I do this? This is my buyback order. I did sell custom with stop. So I'm selling this option and I'm going to buy it back. So I'm going to hit this little wheel right here, and I'm going to say, buy this back if Facebook marks at or below 137. Now, one of the things I like to do, just so you guys know, and again, 137 is the strike that I sold. So I'm selling the 137 below the 30-day moving average, okay? But I'm setting my stop order to buy it back if it trades below 137. Now I'm going to do one thing different. You see this submit order at? This is your time stamp. Lots of times throughout the day, the stock will go low, but then it'll fight back. You ever see these wicks like this? Hammers? That means that throughout the day, it went low, but buyers pushed it back up. So what I like to do is I want to submit this order. And I'm going to submit this order for 14.55. Let me show you. That's army time. Which is 2.55. When does the stock market close? Stock market closes at 3.00. PM. 3 p.m. So I want to, so 1455 is 255. If Facebook is below 137 at 255, basically that's the end of the day, then what I want to do is buy that back. So I'm selling the put, and it's going to show you a maximum loss, but I'm not going to get maximum loss because I have a stop. So I'm going to be getting $300 in my account immediately for selling this put. My maximum loss is $1,340 and the stock goes to zero. But I'm going to buy this back if Facebook trades below my strike that I sold five minutes before the market closes. And I'm going to send that order. And I got filled. So, I got filled. So I go down here to Facebook, right click, and I'm going to move it to my, let's go my basic options. We'll do that. Move to basic options class. So we sold the put. But, we have a working order to buy it back. So I, I'm not worried about paying 30000 out of my pocket. I was given $300. And what I'm saying is Facebook, it, it's at 148 It has to go down $11 before it even stops me out. I'm given, and if the stock just kind of does this, you know, kind of works its way around. Here, 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 here. I don't even care if it goes sideways. When I buy a stock, it's got to go in what direction for me to make money? When I buy a stock, what direction does it have to go? Up. When I buy a long call for a trend trade entry, what direction does the stock have to go up for me to make money? A long call. 
up. When I sell a put, I want the stock to go up to make it easy, but the stock can go up, it can go sideways, it can even go down a little. And in this case, it can go down $11. As long as it stays above 137 I'm going to get maximum gain. Let me go back over that. When I buy a stock, it's got to go up. When I buy a call, it's got to go up. When I sell a put, it can go up, it can go sideways, it can go down a little. And I can still make maximum gain. Do you guys understand what I just said? You can actually sell a put and the stock can go down and you can still make maximum gain. Do you get that? It's amazing. So you can sell a put on a three green arrow entry. So when you guys are going through your watch list in paper money, and you find a three green arrow entry, you can buy the stock, buy the option long call, or you can sell a put. So let me ask you guys this question. So when you see a three green arrow entry, you can make the decision to buy the stock, you can make the decision to buy the call, or you can make the decision to sell a put. Would that be good or no? Give you three choices on what to do. Because this is a three green arrow entry. You can do one of the three strategies. And then what I'm going to talk about is, because again, this is just straight selling a put. There's another strategy we can add called selling a vertical spread. And it is called a bull put spread. There's another one. And I'll just let you guys know, we haven't done that yet, that selling a vertical spread, okay, so if I sell this put, okay, we're pretty good on that, right? Again, the only downside is you have to have money in reserve. For example, create duplicate order. Watch this, guys. Now, there's a maximum loss. I get it. But if you're setting a stop loss, unless the stock gaps to zero, but again, we're selling big companies, so the reality is it's not going to happen. But look at the buying power. Y'all familiar with Forex, right, where you have to have the buying power? This is how much money you're going to have to have in reserves to sell that put. Because there's unlimited loss, or in this case, maximum loss is 13000 The broker is going to make sure that you have 1755 So it's just like Forex, where you have to have your buying power. You're going to have to look at your buying power for your margin. Because... You're basically, they're giving you the credit and you're obligating yourself to buy the stock. So you've got to have margin. Okay. Now, this is not bad. I mean, $13,000 if you were going to buy 100 shares or 1,700. So this is, this is good. This is why you need a margin account. But you need to look at your margin to make sure. Now, this is an expensive stock. So you need to make sure that you've got enough in your account for margin. Okay. But that's so cool, guys. So here's my thing. Does it make sense to master the three green arrow setup? Because, guys, if you can master the three green arrow setup and you know these strategies to trade, aren't you in a powerful position? Because remember, the setup is three green arrows. What you, However you trade that, it's your business. The three green arrows is a bullish strategy. So you've just got to trade 
bullish strategies. Yeah. It's the same with the bull flag. If the bull flag is a bullish strategy, guess what? Just so you know, I can buy the stock. I can buy the long call. It's not a trend trade. I can sell the put. I can do a vertical spread. Guys, these are bullish trading strategies. It doesn't matter the setup. These are bullish strategies. So if I master the bull flag strategy, the setup, higher high, two to five day pullback, at or near support, higher low. If I master this setup, I can buy the stock, I can buy the call, I can sell a put, I can sell a vertical spread, which we haven't talked about yet. If it's a three green arrow strategy, all that matters is, is it a bullish strategy or bearish? Well, it's a bullish. So I can buy the stock, buy the call, sell a put, sell a vertical. So let me tell you really quickly what a vertical spread is, and then we'll call it a day. So guess what? If I sell the 137 put, I have unlimited risk to the downside. But what if I what if I buy the 135 put? So if I buy the 135 put, if I buy the 135 put, what direction do I want the stock to go? If I buy the put, what direction do I want the stock to go? Down. If I sell the put, what direction do I want the stock to go? Up. So what I've done by doing this is I sold the 137, but I bought the 135 as protection. So this way, if the stock goes down, my protection is kicking in. Okay, so my maximum loss is the distance between the spread. So by selling a vertical spread, I have protected myself to the downside. When I sell just the put, I sell the put, I have no protection to the downside, but I have a stop loss. So again, don't worry. But when I sell the 137 and I buy the 135, I don't need a stop loss. My stop loss is the strike that I sold. And my maximum loss is the distance between the spread. So it's a less risky strategy. You don't set a stop loss and you just let it do its thing. Okay? So I go here and I right click sell vertical. I sell the 137 put and I buy the 135. Now I have rules that say I need a certain percentage return. The percentage return that I need, and again we'll write rules, is 30%. I need a 30% return on my money. So right now if I click, they're going to give me 46 cents. So if I go here I take my maximum profit, $46, and I divide it by 154. That's a 0 .298. 0.298. Okay? I need 47 cents. That's the number. If I sell a $2 wide spread, I need 47 cents because $47 divided by 153 is 30%. So I'm going to send that, and we'll see if we get filled. Again, the 30, the, right now it's telling me that it's right at the mid, so we're just going to let it sit there. And what we're saying is, hey, market maker, if you're willing to give us $0.47, cents, I'll take this position. If not, I don't want it, $0.47. 47 cents. So we'll see if we get filled. And then what we'll do is if we get filled, we just did a vertical spread. So now there's no stop loss on that position. We just let it do its thing, and I have rules for that. So really quickly, did that kind of freak y'all out, or you know, was it good? You know, very. I mean, is that again? That's the vertical spread. So what do you what do y'all think? I mean, again, I threw so much stuff. You probably were like, oh my god, like a fire hose, you know, drinking out of the little the fire hose. Yeah, it has a lot of info. 
Oh, it's solid, all right. <laughs> you have no idea. This is everything. You master this one strategy. You master this one strategy, and you learn how to trade these four. You'll make more money than you could ever dream of. All right, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that free training on introduction to selling options. We talked about a lot of stuff. I know it was a long class, but again, I did that for some of my students and I thought it was so good based on their feedback, I wanted to give it to you, okay? So again, just grasp the concepts and understand that if that's something that interests you and you want to learn more about it, then you need to take the action to move forward. So again, I hope you enjoyed that training. Now, because you watched that video, what I want to do is I want to make you a one-time special offer right now into my introduction to a uh, basic options class. Okay. I have a full training part-time university and I also have the basic options. It's one of the classes within the university. So if options are something that interests you and you'd like to learn more about it and how to utilize those strategies, on that three green arrow technique that we talked about, you know, the selling the put, the selling the vertical spreads, then make sure you join our basic options class, okay? So just click the link below if you're interested in taking a look at the basic options class. And I'm going to give you a seven-day free trial to check it out. Inside that class, there's already tons and tons of videos that are recorded that we did a while back for students that you can go back and watch. Plus, every Tuesday, we have our live basic options class where we train on those strategies that we talked about in this video, okay, live. So again, I'm going to give you a seven-day free trial into the basic options class. Just click the link below if that's something that you want to take a look at. And again, live classes every Friday. All right, everybody, this is a trader, Jeff Moore, author of the book, Trading Part-Time. And I hope that you enjoyed that free training on introduction to selling options. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that free training. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button below, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Okay, and make sure you hit that little bell to be notified whenever I shoot a brand new video. All right, until next time, this is Trader Jeff Moore, author of the book, Trading Part-Time, and we'll see you in the next video lesson.